Good evening and welcome to the Norwood School Committee meeting of Wednesday, September 27th. Uh, we are coming to you tonight in hybrid format. Um, we have four members in attendance at the Savage Center and uh, Ms. Teresa Stewart is remote tonight. Um, for all those in attendance, I'm going to ask you to please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Um, and I'll just remind everybody that since we have one member remote that I will need you to call all of our votes by roll call tonight. Uh, first order of business um, is approval of minutes. We have four sets of minutes in our packet. Um, not sure if we want to take these separately, but I believe there may be a motion. <laughs> yes, Teresa. I'm like over here raising my hand, but I actually hit the thing on the screen. Um, <laughs> so I'd like to make a motion to table the approval of the executive session minutes just so we can follow up on something um, in executive session. So if I could make a motion to table the September 13th and September 20th executive session minutes. Second. Seconded by David. So take a roll call vote. I'll start with Teresa. Yes. Kate. Joan? Yes. David? Yes. I'm a yes as well, so that passes five to zero. Um, so on the matter of the public uh, meeting minutes from September 13th and September 20th, do I have a motion to approve those minutes? So moved. Moved by David, seconded by Joan. Uh, Teresa? Yes. Kate? Yes. Joan? Yes. David? Yes. I'm a yes as well, so that's <coughs> passed five to zero. Okay, uh, moving on to the next item is correspondence. Dr. Thompson, do we have any correspondence? Not, Madam Chair. Fabulous. Uh, next item on the agenda is warrants. So this week, um, for on the warrant report, I signed warrants in the amounts of one million nine hundred and fifteen thousand one hundred ninety-six dollars and twenty-five cents, uh, eight hundred forty-one thousand one hundred fifty-nine dollars and forty-seven cents, twenty-two thousand one hundred thirty-five dollars and seven cents, nine thousand seven hundred twenty-nine dollars and fifty cents, eleven thousand three hundred two dollars and sixty-three cents. $401,151.35, $1,145.61, and $54,756.27 for a grand total of $3,256,576.15. Are there any questions on the warrant report this evening? Okay, seeing none, we will move on. Uh, next item on the agenda is public comment. Um, as a reminder to the community, uh, public comment can be accessed um, in person um, by coming to the meeting and signing in at the meeting, uh, also by pre-registering by calling the superintendent's office by noon the day of the meeting, um, as well as in the hybrid format by calling the superintendent's office the day uh, by noon the day of the meeting to receive a meeting link. Um, at 7.07, I'll declare public comment open. Is anyone here to speak for public comment? Seeing none, at 7.07, I will declare, declare a public comment closed. <clears throat> okay, moving straight through to appearances. Tonight we have Ms. Jill Driscoll, our lead nurse, to give us a back to school update. Jill. Do you miss me? <laughs> <laughs> Haven't seen you in a whole 24 hours. Real. <laughs> so I had put this. Um, slide um, show there of all of three slides um, up before school started um, so that everybody is aware there is no guidance on COVID that's come from the Department of Public Health or the Department of Elementary and Secondary Education. So I went with what we were doing in the spring and I looked at what the American Academy of Pediatrics was recommending. I reached out to people that I know at the Mass Department of Public Health. I talked to Stacy Lane at the Norwood Department of Public Health, and this is what we came up with as our best practice. So the CDC has declared the pandemic officially over. So COVID is now endemic, which means it's much like the flu or strep or you know other viruses and bacteria that just circulate in our community. Mm -hmm. um, it is 
still obviously of concern to all of us. Um, so everybody's watching the news, the wastewater numbers are up. It's because we're all back together again. And we all had fun this summer. We took trips, we got together with our families, and, and that's what viruses do. They look for ways to spread themselves so they can stay alive. Um, the really good news for Norwood is that as a community, um, we're really pretty well vaccinated. Um, I had shared with um, Mrs. Stewart that um, most of our adult population, um, 74 to 100%, um, and then 34 to 77 continued on and got boosters. Um, our kids, it's a little bit lower. Um, I think it was a hard decision for some parents to make with a new vaccine. Um, I think that the American Academy of Pediatrics is saying more now about it's safe, it's effective. Um, I think parents are probably thinking about it in their home, talking about it with their pediatrician, and we'll see where those numbers go. What the, the game here with viruses is you want herd immunity. And herd immunity means that 80% or better in a community have received a vaccine. So that means when the virus is looking to infect people, there are less people available to be infected. So we're, in, we're not in bad shape. That being said, are we seeing it in schools? Sure we are. Mm -hmm. um, I will say that community members have been awesome about calling, talking to the school nurse, what are we doing, reporting that their child is ill. Staff has been exceptional. Um, some of the kids and some of the staff are choosing to wear masks just because we're back together, and that's fine. Everybody is doing sort of their own thing based on their choices. Um, we will not be doing contact tracing or COVID testing at school. Um, it's not being financially supported, and um, I think that there's not a compelling reason for us to be spending school dollars on that right now. Um, so that being said, um, I will tell you, you have an awesome group of nurses that work for you, and they do a fabulous job no matter what. So all through the pandemic and continuing this year, we do keep track of when, how many kids are positive in a school. We look for trends. Is it in a team? Is it in a grade? Is it in a classroom? Um, and we use that to inform ourselves when children come into the health office and they're saying they don't feel well and we know perhaps there are two other kids in their grade we might choose to send them home sooner than we would if we didn't have that information. So we're doing that kind of tracking. It's not official, it's not being reported to anybody, it's just informing our practice. Um, people who do test COVID positive, the current recommendation by the CDC, the American Academy of Pediatrics, and the Department of Public Health is you should isolate for five days. Um, I will say for those students and staff that have been ill, they have not been very ill, and they typically are testing themselves daily and find that by day three, they're no longer positive. That everybody's been super cooperative about staying home for five days. It is recommended, not required, not mandated, we're not the COVID police, but it is recommended that for five additional days, you just wear a mask when you're in a, a crowded public setting, just to be kind to our neighbors. Um, we are asking kids that are sneezing, coughing, or have a fever to wear a mask in the health office, just because um, it's such a surprise to you. We have high foot traffic, and we try and keep everybody from infecting each other. So that's it, and then the last slide I have put up is really just to remember all the nice health practices that everybody practiced during the pandemic, and you, you all know these things. Um, if you're sick, stay home, 
wash your hands. If you can't get to soap and water, use hand sanitizer. Try not to touch your mouth, your nose, your eyes. Um, teachers are doing a great job. They wipe down their desks and clean frequently used surfaces. Our custodial staff continues being super diligent, spraying, cleaning, wiping down handrails. They're doing an awesome job. Um, the weather's been, mm, but we're trying to open windows. Um, the kids have been able to go outside a lot of the days, which is good. And then just sort of try not to clump up together, spread ourselves out a little bit. Um, so that's kind of our back to school report, unless you have other questions for me. Thank you, Mr. School. Does anyone have any questions? No, thank you. Oh, yes, Teresa. Even if I'm not in the room, you don't get rid of me. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> um, thank you, uh, Ms. Driscoll, and thank you for your staff for everything that you continue to do. Um, I was wondering if you could just very briefly share with the rest of the school committee, you know, what you and I were talking about earlier with all the additional great work that your staff is doing in conjunction with the Board of Health around other topics. I just think it's really important for the community to know, like, all that you do. Thank you, Teresa. Um, we, um, before the pandemic, we had a lot of programs in place. Um, they stopped because of the of COVID and also because a number of people that we had partnered with had um, chosen to retire. So um, I worked and the staff worked um, beginning in the winter of last year. So this fall, um, we again had a um, partnership with um, Dr. Graham Stetson, who runs Modernize right on Washington Street in Norwood. Oh, mm -hmm. So when we vision screen our children, um, we can get immediate referral to his practice and glasses for kids. Um, we partnered with Dr. Victor Nayakundi, who is a uh, dentist, and we have started dental clinic. He screened 200 sixth graders and, uh, I'm sorry, 150 sixth graders and 200 children at the Balch School. He's taking closing his practice on Fridays to do this for us. And um, together with the Board of Health, who helps finance this dental clinic program, um, we're getting dental care for kids who don't have that as an option. And I also have, uh, in the past, partnered with a uh, woman who had a private business for our vaccination clinics. Mm -hmm. She was offered a lovely position and sold her business to the Shaw's Osco Pharmacy. And I'm currently partnered with um, a lovely gentleman there. It's a, it's a little less easy for me because he has to go through corporate channels, whereas it was her own business, so it, it went faster. Um, the good news is that because he's part of a ch chain pharmacy, it's easier for him to get polio, MMR, DTAP, a lot of the childhood immunizations that some of our um, new residents in Norwood are missing. Um, so we're doing catch-up clinics, we're doing flu clinics, and I am working to set up a clinic in October where hopefully we'll have the newest um, COVID vaccine, which addresses some of the more prevalent Omicron variants. Um, so that's been good. And then along with Ms. Stewart and the Board of Health, we're trying to work on a mental health screening initiative. Um, and I, I just need to locate a partner in um, the community because there's no sense in screening if you don't have a place to send people when they have an issue. So, um, but yeah, we're always trying to think of what the kids need. Um, to be healthy and ready to be in school and to learn. And it's kind of lovely for the nursing staff to be back doing that instead of COVID testing and contact tracing and all those things that we had to do during the pandemic. Thank you for asking, Ms. Stewart. Yeah, thank you for all you do, Jill. So just to be clear about upcoming clinics. Is there a general upcoming clinic for flu and 
that booster you just mentioned? You said you October, but it's not set yet? Or? So with this new gentleman that okay. I partnered with, he has to go through corporate channels because he's part of a larger business operation. Yeah. Um, so he is looking at the week of October 26th okay. to see what he can get approved by his management people. Okay. And I am hoping to offer um, flu vaccine and the latest COVID vaccine. The latest COVID vaccine was um, approved on September 12th. Um, he just couldn't accept delivery. We had a small clinic on the 21st. Yeah. Um, and he was unable to have it in hand for that clinic. Yeah. But we're aiming for October. And this would work just for the community. It would work the same way where we would the, it would go out and people would sign up. Time. Right. I will send out, uh, Dr. Thompson's nice enough to do Parent Square, um, Stephanie Bodwin's nice enough to put it on the web page, and there's a link, and you can sign up. Um, we're not super strict about appointment times, um, because everybody's busy, so if you sign up ahead of time, they, they pre-populate your sheet, so all you have to do is answer the screening questions and sign your name. Mm -hmm. If you don't sign up beforehand, it's not a big deal. We're still happy to see you. It's just you have to sort of do your homework when you get there and yeah. fill out the whole sheet. Um, and that will be open to um, students, um, families, community members, um, staff. I am partnered with the Board of Health and we do. We've done it for many, many years, um, have flu clinics in each of the schools for the staff, which just makes it really easy for them to get it, you know, before they go home at the end of the day and not have to make a second trip. Um, but they're welcome at the, the clinic that will be at the high school as well. Great. And I'm, I'm super not upset if people call or email me. Um, I, I am happy to answer anybody's questions. Great, thank you. Any other questions, Ms. Crystal? Great. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Get back to work. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> All righty. Next on our agenda is the superintendent's report. Yes, I'd actually like to uh, like to start with the budget transfer. Sure. That is uh, on your uh, on your agenda. It was a late ad. Uh, the business office catching up with it. But this is the transfer that we talked about on the 13th about moving uh, salary lines for psychologists to um, contracted services so that we could hire a service to do that because we've been unable to find a school psychologist going on two years now. Um, so moving uh, 421 427 from the Willett and 41 427 from the Coakley for, um, into the special ed medical contract service line for a total of 82854. Does anybody want to make a motion to approve this budget transfer? So moved. Moved by Joan. Second. Seconded by Kate. I will poll individually. Teresa. Not Sorry. <laughs> I always start with the uh, remote. No, no, that's okay. The number that Dr. Thompson just said is different than the number in our packet. It's, oh, it's, it's, no, it's, a, it's a minor difference, or at least I've heard him say something different. Is it 82,494? I just closed it. <laughs> the memo says, I look at the memo, 82,854 is what the memo says. Is that what's on the sheets? No, on the budget transfer, it's 82,494, okay, which go. I think is also the number that Ms. Sheridan had given us on the spreadsheet on the 13th. Let's go with that then. Okay, so, oh, and the, okay, and that's the one yeah, that yep, 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 yep. sideways, so. <laughs> yeah, the sideways doesn't work for me. Yeah. So, um, so in that case, just specifically, I wanna make sure that um, the motion on the table is to uh, approve a budget transfer in the amount of 82,494, con confirmed. Yes, and seconded by Kate as well? Yes. Okay, perfect. Um, so, okay, so Teresa? Yes. Kate? Yes. Joan? Yes. David? Yeah. And I may yes as well, so that passes four to zero. Five to zero. Jeez, so crow, I can't count. No. All right. Let's get All right. Back to my slides here. Okay. So uh, first, uh, when we did send news out to extended day families uh, yesterday evening, 
late afternoon. Uh, we've hired our uh, new incentive day director. Uh, Aaron Grogan will start Monday. We're very excited to have us uh, join our team. Want to again thank Deb Holzendorf for her over 20 years of, uh, of service to uh, the Northern Public Schools and wish her a wonderful retirement. Um, the other piece that if you remember last spring we did that communications survey and had some takeaways. At this point uh, each school has met with their staff and have, has determined classroom uh, and new classroom newsletters, school newsletters, newsletter, and individual communication methods by school so they will be consistent uh, and we have implemented weekly community flyers on Tuesday afternoon so when Norwood basketball or the hockey team or the youth hockey send us that all goes in one parent uh, square post on Tuesday as to post all that stuff coming haphazardly so please look for those flyers all that community information for that week on Tuesdays. MCAS we did receive our results we are currently reviewing them digging deep into them staffs have started to talk about the results um, in their staff meetings that will go on for the next month. Um, once we finish our deep dive, we will have a um, presentation uh, to the school committee and to the community. Uh, this week and next week, we're starting our back to school and open houses. Those communication policies should be communicated with you at that point in time so that you know, you know, at the Vault School, you're gonna get communication using this method consistently. Uh, so I hope everyone will try to make those events. Um, and look for that information. It's a good opportunity to come together as a school community. And then I'm going to ask Dr. Munoz to uh, talk a little bit about some of the things that have gone on with academics and instruction. Yeah, uh, thank you, Dr. Thompson. Um, good evening, everybody. Welcome to another night of school committee. Uh, I have been, I have had the privilege to be able to walk through our school buildings multiple times this year already and witness the impressive and incredible hard work of our teachers and, and staff and our school principals and um, I just wanted to share a couple things that I've noticed so far you know yesterday we were at the high school we were conducting instructional rounds uh, you know Dr. Gall Gall I'm sorry, I always miss his name I would say Hugh Dr. Gallagher um, has instructional rounds that happen at the high school and it's a combination of teachers and, and, and administration and we visited 20 classrooms saw a lot of engaging students doing some really good work and we come back and we collaborate around the problem or practice that the high school has presented to us based off of the department chairs and teacher teams that are there. And it was really great to see, you know, um, students really diving into the work in different classes, whether it's AP Spanish, whether it's a forensics class, whether it's math, you know, literature and all those other things. Uh, so that was happened yesterday and we look forward to coming back there when um, they have their next instructional rounds later on this fall as well as the PD Day. So the PD Day came by on the 18th of September and the elementary schools got to do some character strong training which is I believe the Coakley has already experienced. And so it was really well received. They participated and there was a lot of positive feedback with the facilitators, the principals and the staff as well. And so they're looking to move that instruction on, for, on forward as well. Kindergarten did not do character strong. They did second step which is a little bit of a different training but um, they went through that process as well and they were able to uh, fill their buckets with more tools and strategies to help kids on a social and emotional lens for that. The middle school and high school also attended a trauma training around trauma, which the elementary schools will be receiving on the next PD day that we have a half day of. And so um, it was really where we see there's really good conversation that happened in the auditorium at the high school. And there was a lot of great discussion as I walked in and I think Dr. Thompson walked in at the end of that training as well. We were able to kind of see a little bit and I talked to the trainer as well as, as that happened. The last thing is, yes, so we are finishing up with our Renaissance assessments and our Dibbles assessments. Uh, teachers and principals and our coordinators, curriculum coordinators, all working extremely hard to look at the data, dive into the data, and strategically partner with each other to form groups that are actually targeting like the, the real small deficits that students have. So, you know, which students are working on CVC words, which, you know, versus like which students should be working on different types of different literary skills or math skills. And so they are starting to do that now in their common planning times and look at the data to really strategically target small group instruction to make sure that they are meeting the needs of all of our students. Okay, thank you. And just as a reminder out there in the community, our next PD day is Tuesday, October 17th, and that is a half day. So students will be going home midday. So keep that in mind, please. Um, we, still ha we are still looking for paraprofessionals, assistant transportation director, and extended day staff. Those postings are still up there. Please, if you are interested or know someone who's interested, 
uh, please um, send them to our website, the career tab, and they can apply there, or simply call the superintendent's office if that is easier. So that is it, unless there are any questions from the committee. Any questions for Dr. Thompson? Yes, Teresa. Thank you uh, for all that information. Uh, just, just so we know, Dr. Thompson, was like, what to expect in this kind of feeds into the long-term agenda discussion we'll have later too. Um, when do you think we'll have the MCAS presentation? Like end of October or November? Uh, I think it's usually done the beginning of November. Whenever you like. Yeah. So it, it, Sorry, I, I lost you for a second. What did yeah. you say? Uh, beginning of November. Um, that will give the faculty enough time to dig deep into the data. They just got it last Tuesday. So we are just starting to, to work on that. So. And then in the past, sometimes Dr. Wyatt had shared some of the Renaissance data with us. Is that a practice that will be continuing this year? Yes, and uh, we're actually looking at sharing uh, student results with parents as well. Thank you for asking that. I actually wrote that same question down about um, when are we going to put this on the LTA. Yep. So, <laughs> Anne-Marie? Yes. Um, Dr. Munoz, the, you had talked about Dibble, and that's for the younger kids, right? Yeah, yeah. so our uh, kindergarten, first, second, and third graders all go through a Dibble's assessment, which is a reading assessment to find out like letters and sounds and vowels and all that stuff. Okay. And so after they get um, their assessment, obviously there's targeted instruction for small group instruction. You know, we have foundations that we also use as well. And uh, we had two schools piloted last year at the Willet. So the Willet and the Callahan piloted these, school, uh, the, the, these assessments, and we saw tremendous growth from fall all the way to spring. Oh, great. So one thing that I want to remind uh, families that are maybe watching this is that you are going to be um, notified of your child's score, and not, not panic. We have a summer slump. You know, it's the it, kindergarten's the first time taking a real assessment, and so what we saw last year is that the Willet and the Callahan, when they took it in the fall, there was a lot of Maybe people would have started ringing the alarms. By the time the spring came, it was a huge amount of growth in the trajectory, as it should have been for learning. So. Okay. And the other tool you mentioned was that Renaissance. You Renaissance. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Thanks. Any other questions on the superintendent updates? Okay. So we will move right along um, to budget. Um, so first item under budget is a budget subcommittee update. Ms. Stewart. Yes, um, Amory, I'll just get us started kind of combine BBC and, and subcommittee together and then Go if you it. and Dr. Thompson want to add in and extrapolate. I think that is a great strategy. <laughs> yeah. um, all right, so we met as a, we met with BBC on September 20th um, and then we met as a subcommittee on September 21st. Um, in your packets tonight, you do have our minutes from our meeting on the 21st, as well as the meeting that we had on the 14th. Um, and then you also have some material in your packet from the Budget Balancing Committee that we received um, from Mr. Mazzupo. Um, he had put together some five-year projections um, that Mr. Mazzupo worked on as the town manager, um, and then also some information on capital outlay. Um, Broadly, just so you know it's coming up, we are meeting again as a subcommittee on October 5th and October 19th. Um, we are also going to the Finance Commission on October 19th. They would like to speak with us about our warrant articles that we put forth to the Board of Selectmen. Um, as you probably know at the town meeting, um, the Finance Commission has to say if they support the warrant article or not, and then this way we will have a chance to dialogue with them. Um, and then we have scheduled out BBC for October 18th and November 6th. Um, Amory and, and Dr. Thompson, I'm not sure, you know, which details of these meetings um, we want to dive into tonight, uh, but that's just, you know, what we've been doing and what we have ahead. Yeah, I think just to add that um, this BBC meeting was um, approximately two months after maybe even a little bit longer than we met in the spring. Um, obviously very hard to get that many people together over the summertime. Um, for a meeting and um, it was kind of a, a reconvening because you know a lot of things have changed obviously over the summer there's been a lot of um, just more information um, so it was kind of like I said a reconvening we did a, um, a new um, uh, the new chair of the BBC will be Matt Lane because uh, now this year it is the uh, the Board of Selectmen who is to chair the, the for FY25 um, so we you know 
we'll dive into this more um, within in the next couple of meetings. Um, once we have a little bit more information, there's some information on um, both sides of the town and the schools that we want to uh, bring back to the next meeting to really, you know, get de a little bit deeper into this five-year projection and plan. Mm -hmm. Any questions? Um, will you just elaborate to, I was, when I was reading the packet, the, like, is, is the town looking to put together like a capital outlay five-year plan where it's these are large projects from everything like whether it's like roads sewer water sure. like physical plant buildings or like because what i looked at it looked like it was just a budget spreadsheet that was so projecting so they're kind of separate but kind of the same thing at the same time um so at capital outlay just you know we we have talked several times about having a five-year projection um to to at least know uh, and we and we did use that at our last um capital outlay meeting i think that was in our packets for maybe the last meeting um where there were projects and then across those projects were you know um if we were doing like a, a um, a study or something like that asking for money for a study that you know then how much would it cost in the out years and just trying to trying to get our heads around uh, that projection for the next five years so I think there is um, a more of a con concerted effort across the different boards because there are different members on different boards right so the BBC is uh, members of the Finance Commission and the Board of Selectmen and the School Committee plus members of the t uh, working for the town and the schools um, the capital outlay is a lot more community members so um, there is, but, but there is this um, recognition that we really do need to be more broadly looking at this. So um, Capital LA started to look at that. Um, it, is act, it is definitely feeding into the, the BBC discussions um, and vice versa um, to at least know where we are, where we're going, and what it's going to cost us, and what's, like, what's immediately needed on the horizon, um, what we keep saying we're gonna do and then kicking it down the road because we get there and we can't afford it or you know oh it wasn't that big of a deal but we were calling it high priority but you know we it, so long version <laughs> short version is yes <laughs> we are we are definitely working on that any other questions okay all right so we will move on um, to the next agenda item which is the long-term agenda review. So um, in your packets, you have a link to the LTA. Um, uh, I'll start off by saying that um, it's been populated with some things. There are definitely some things that still need to be populated. Um, we've talked recently about um, in a couple of different areas, either in executive session or in um, uh, budget meetings or whatnot that, you know, for example, policy. We, we've gotten together and talked about that we, we do need to put together a plan of exactly what policies we're gonna be bringing forward at what times. Um, I think we have the next couple set out, and I just haven't put them into the LTA yet, but they will go in. Um, we have a pol I, I won't jump ahead, but we have a <laughs> it's coming up soon. Um, so we'll need to, but, but we uh, basically need a, we are planning um, for that work and getting that onto the LTA. Um, other than that, obviously I'm gonna add MCAS onto there, um, but is for there November. anything else that, what's sorry? For November. For November, yeah. yes, for November. Um, we are starting to fill up in some meetings, um, so definitely cognizant of that because November we only have one meeting. So I was going to be at work <laughs> and say we should probably call that full if we had it. I think we should call, probably call that full. Um, but is there anything else glaringly missing? Is there anything else? I don't, I, you know, I don't like to spend a ton of time because this is, you know, planning and agenda making. We can absolutely do this outside of the meeting. We don't have to do this, you know, um, debate anything tonight. But. Um, anything that needs to be added immediately or um, you notice is really missing and want the us or the administrative team to go back and decide when they want to present something. So for the October 11th and from the email from Karen, um, Karen I assume that we're moving everything from the 11th to the 25th for her. That's how I read that. Yes, so I that think. frees up October 11th. Yeah, that should be, yes. That The plan is to move that um, item to the 25th. Okay. And I think it's already there in high, red highlight. It just wasn't removed from. So it's uh, essentially 11. her quarter, quarterly budget report. That's what it Correct. is. Correct. Right. Um, yes, Teresa. I'm asking a question. I'm sorry. Uh, I, this. Oh, sorry. No, go ahead. Did, did you call me? Yes. Okay. 
Um, I was gonna say there were some budget things that we had identified that will be shifted around. Um, a couple of, of questions and things. That comes to schools. We're supposed to have quarterly check-ins, and I do think we are due for one in October, um, so we should get that on the agenda. Uh, and then I did look through the bull document, and just as a reminder to everybody, in the beginning of 2024, we do have the two-year bull cycle. Um, so what we had agreed to already is that by the end of January, we would have Dr. Thompson's self-assessment. And we would also, by the end of January, um, we need to decide who on the school committee are the two people working on writing up the evaluation. And there are forms that we have to get out to all of us. And that we agreed that in February, and we did not yet set a date, I think we were waiting to see some like budget things and, and school vacation, but we do need to set a date in February when our individual evaluations are due. Um, because we agreed that on March 6th, we would have the composite document completed and discussed. And then on March 20th, if we need it, continuing that discussion, but no later than March 20th, have the superintendent evaluation process completed. Thank you. So, and one other thing, question for, for Dr. Thompson and his team. Um, could we have an update on the wellness curriculum um, and what's going on with that cycle that we approved in the spring and the budget that we approved for the wellness curriculum? Like, where are we in that process? Are things being piloted? Is it on track? What should we expect coming our way? And then also, how does um, the recent update from the state on the frameworks play into that curriculum cycle? time on that yeah um, is, is, is that something we should go back and just figure out when that would be best suited is there something that do we have we don't have anything keeping us to a certain date on that right we just want to have that on the LTA I, I'm really just looking for an update if anyone's updated okay. I'll have more questions I, I don't know where we are I just know we approved money for that work in K through 5 and 6 through 12 and I'm not sure where we are so um, yeah, Whatever Dr. Thompson and his team think is relevant to update us, but I, okay. but I do think it should probably be, you know, before December. Yeah, I just want to make sure that you didn't have a paper in front of you that said we said before. Yeah. Is that okay? Dr. Thompson will find a time yes, before December. That, that, that process has not started yet, so it's still still September, but it's still settling yet. So. Okay. Anything else on long-term agenda? So everything from the 11th is moving with the exception of policy, staff handbooks. Yeah, so we put and staff. And the superintendent search process. Uh, what about that? Yes. And then, uh, no, so then the PTO template, I think we, we should, depending on how the meeting goes on Monday, we should probably be able to um, bring that forward. Um, I think we got everything that we needed for that. Um, and then the objective one, I believe we should be ready to go in October. Okay, then so that would stay. On the 11th. Should we just put on, on the 11th, yeah. On the 11th, an update for that then? An update for? The search committee. It's on there. It's on there. there. Scroll down. It's the last thing. The last ah. thing. <laughs> Scroll down. We got it. We hit it at the bottom. <laughs> I'm wondering if we could think about making sure that that meeting stays as short as possible because there's so many meetings that are not on our long-term agenda that are happening in no no absolutely I, I, I 100 million percent maybe agree. we could have that be remote as well I'm just yeah <laughs> uh, no promises but um, I think that could be one of the shorter ones uh, we like to have a few short ones sprinkled in there considering how long our meetings can go well, we did meet one day executive session that night. No, absolutely. I think that's why yes. keeping it short is a good idea. Yes. <laughs> um, okay. Any other uh, comments, questions, concerns on the LTA right now? Mm -hmm. If you come up with them, I know you will because you're going to have second thoughts later. Um, definitely just give me an email and we can add things. Um, also, feel free to add things on and just put a comment there so I can see that it's been added like a balloon um, so I know it's, it is new. Okay. 
All right, so moving on um, to the next item is the School Health Council update. Ms. Stewart. Yeah, we met two weeks ago with the School Health Council, which as a reminder, um, Ryan Sigley is the chair of that. And um, I know he's on the LTA to come back in like his official capacity and give a full report, um, but just giving an update. Um, so the School Health Council met, um, Mr. Quigley was there, Heather Begg was there, the student representative, um, I was there. Um, Connor Rosnan was there from Impact Norwood, Impact Norwood, and then Kate too from the um, library, the Memorial Library, she has joined the Health Council as well. Um, you have in your packet a copy of the minutes from Mr. Quigley, and you also have a copy of a presentation that Heather Bag put together. Um, you may remember in June when Heather and Bob Blood came to our meeting, um, they had shared the idea that came out of the School Health Council before of having our students present directly to the teachers um, about how to build trust and relationships with them. And Heather gave that presentation to the high school staff already. Um, I have heard many, many amazing things and about the positive impact that that uh, presentation had on the high school staff. And Heather is going to the Copley staff on October 10th to give that presentation um, to our middle school teachers. Um, at the last school health council, um, we are just continuing to plan our work. Um, you know, I'm really happy to say that I think we're building more capacity within the community and both the library and Impact Norwood um, are committed to working with our health council and there's been a lot of discussion around getting more programming into the middle school um, for students after school through Impact Norwood and through the library. Um, as you know, every two years, we administer the Metro West survey. So that will be administered, I believe in October. I wasn't told the dates yet, but I know Mr. Quigley was working with Dr. Galligan and Dr. Frazick to fine tune those dates. Um, but that is a survey that we hope all of our six to 12th graders take. Um, and then there is just a discussion, which I do think, you know, we need more attention to as a school committee and, and with Dr. Thompson and Dr. Taylor on getting messaging out about the School Health Council, the work that we do, and getting more people involved. Um, Ryan was gonna talk to some staff members, um, trying to get more staff participation, um, and we hope to connect with Dr. Taylor on a community-wide message and hopefully get more parents involved as well. Um, we meet next as a School Health Council on November 14th at 3.30 in the high school library. Any questions for Ms. Stewart about School Health Council? Okay. Thank you very much, Teresa. Okay, so next item on the agenda um, is the um, vote for the middle school naming. Um, as the community knows, we held a public forum uh, last evening at the Norwood High School um, with uh, many members of the community in attendance. Um, there were um, uh, comments made uh, in support or opposition um, to um, the three topped names. So just to remind the community, the three name, uh, names that came out of our community survey uh, were of the Dr. Philip O. Copley Middle School, uh, Norwood Middle School, and the Robert Fitz Fitzpatrick Middle School. Um, so those were the three names that we went to the community forum with uh, last evening. Um, and like I said, it was it was well attended. Um, you know, very. Um, it was nice to see uh, lots of people come out and, and have uh, very well thought out um, statements uh, in support of uh, the names that they were supporting. Um, so having said that, it is at this time that we will decide what we will move forward with. Um, so I don't know if we want to have any more discussion on this or if anybody would like to make a motion. I would just, uh, again, thank everyone for coming out. I think we kind of said this yesterday, but um, for the viewing community today and for folks who are in the room, we just want to thank everyone for uh, being involved and giving your voice um, and um, just, uh, you know, I'll speak for myself, but I think, uh, I, again, want the community to understand that in addition to all the important work that we do for, for our students, um, this is one of the obligations, things that um, the school committee is responsible for in terms of um, making sure that we do things in a certain way that is um, sort of by the book, for lack of a better word. 
Um, so that's kind of what we what we've witnessed, and um, we're glad to have people that care about the school so much, and we hope that that continues as we continue to um, do this work and face the challenges um, that um, public schools are, are looking at these days because there's great things going on. There's a lot of successes. We have some great students and great teachers, and so um, we need our community to be involved. We need our community to pay attention and be here when it when it matters in those times as well. So, I mean, it, it, additionally to this, this type of an issue. So, um, again, just wanted to um, make some sort of overarching comments in that sense, and again, thank everyone for their participation. Thanks, Kate. Yes, Joe. I'll, I'll make the motion to keep the name as is. Okay, Joe made the motion. Do I have a second? Second. Seconded by Kate. Okay, so I will start polling with, Wait, or any comments, the, sorry? Is there any discussion on the motion? I, keep the name as is. Um, I just want to also thank everybody for coming out and doing and engaging in dialogue with us. Um, that is what we need at this point in time in this town is engagement and dialogue. Um, and so I just want to say thank you. I know people are frustrated. I said this last night as well, that they feel like the process took forever, but we laid the process out last May. And so we could have told you that there was going to be a public forum in September in May. Um, and so again, we're doing our best to make sure that we are conduits for what the community um, is thinking about and so that we know what's going on in the community and this is the way we do it as a board. I'll stop now. <laughs> Any other discussion? Oh. Teresa. Yeah, thank you. Um, I echo, you know, both what um, Kate and Joe have said and um, this is what we were hoping for, community engagement. Um, I do want to acknowledge that although the majority of folks who came to speak to us last night and speak to us over the last couple of months in public comment um, spoke about Dr. Copley that we have also received as a committee, you know, emails and in that nomination form um, support for Nord Middle School, um, just the, the generic Nord Middle School. Um, so I do want to acknowledge that we, we heard from people um, with that name and I think there were very valid reasons that people said Nord Middle School. Um, we have not heard that as much in the public forums for whatever reason, people who are not um, but I didn't want to overlook their feedback to us. Absolutely. And I think, you know, I'd be remiss in, in saying that we did have some very nice um, letter uh, emails and, uh, of course, at the at the forum, uh, you know, in support of the Robert Fitzpatrick Middle School as well, um, with, with many valid reasons as well. Um, so I think they were very three very deserving all three names um well not deserving let's that's, that's a really bad word <laughs> like, um valid valid is a better word but the three you know valid names that could have definitely gone on the school but yes Kate. yeah and i think it's worth noting that it, it was brought up to the, there there are some potential conversations to be had in the future about honoring uh, different individuals in different ways um that is not what we're going to be it's not for tonight um but we recognize that, and um, as those opportunities arise, uh, we certainly will be keeping those in mind. Absolutely, thank you. Okay. Any other discussion? Okay, so the motion on the table is to keep the school name as is, seconded by Kate, uh, motion by Joan. I will poll starting with Teresa. Yes. Kate? Yes. Joan? Yes. David? Yes. And I am yes as well, so that passes five to zero. Okay. Can I say something quickly? I know it's not. No, I'm sorry. No, I can't. Um, okay, so moving on to our next item on the agenda is legislative advocacy. Um, Ms. Stewart? Yeah, can you hear me okay, Emory? Yes. Yeah, sometimes something from here cuts in. I think it's us clackety clacking. <laughs> okay, yeah. Like, I can hear you fine, but I can tell like every so often there's some. No, you'll see the blue. Like, you'll see the blue or something over there. Yeah, you see the blue and, go and around I... us, and then you cut out. Okay, but you can hear me right now. Yep. Yep. Yes. 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 Oh, okay. Okay. <laughs> Um, so, so I just wanted to touch base briefly on legislative advocacy. Um, obviously last year we did a lot of advocacy and letter writing on various topics. And first just wanted to check the pulse of the school committee. Is that something we are still committed to? 
Um, and if so, um, it looks like some advocacy on a federal issue may be needed right now. Um, Title I, there's some um, proposals at the federal government to reduce Title I funding by 80%. And I'm assuming that is something that we do not want to happen. Right. Definitely not. <laughs> Was there a vote? Was there a vote recently on this? There's like I think there's a been introduced legislature, correct? Let's see. Okay. Yeah. In the House or, or yeah. Yes, yes. I think the answer is yes. We care about this and yeah, definitely want to add to the discussion. Would you are are you looking, are you looking for yeah. a yeah. Um, vote, a motion, or to just make sure that it's okay with the committee to? Um, go ahead and write said letter because you write them very beautifully. <laughs> oh, thank you. Yes, I, I'm making sure I'm not going rogue, which I will go rogue if needed, but <laughs> um, just want to make sure the committee agrees I can work on something. And then since I'm not in the room to look at Mrs. Smith, could others look at Mrs. Smith and see if the union still wants to work with me on this? She said that, yes. That was she yes. just <laughs> ran out of the room. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, I will find her <laughs> talk to her. And then I know you we were just saying like October 11th was pretty open. Maybe we can have a follow-up discussion on this on October 11th, if that is good with everybody. Yeah, definitely. I think, too, um, just on piggybacking on that, um, maybe this is something where we can reach out to even Board of Selectmen and try to get the whole town behind this. Because I think that didn't that come up at BBC as well? There was something else that they kind of were like, well, there's some legislative advocacy. And we're like, well, we already did that, so we can send you the letters. Um, yeah, that's around the supplemental budget, which I'm glad you said that, Anne-Marie, because they did not get the letter to, to that group, so uh -huh. I can get that to them. Yeah, so I think that, you know, the more people, the better, and of course, if anyone is at home listening and would like to also, um, write, you know, write letters, um, we encourage that. Um, definitely, uh, if you need more information, you know, I would say reach out to by email and we can kind of provide some additional would that be fair to say uh, if any community members want to also join in on that because the more letters the better I would say <coughs> yes I'm, I'm just gonna put out that I'd like for us to remember that we're gonna be averaging three meetings not averaging doing a minimum of three meetings a week during the entire month of November so anything that can be done via email yes. we should be doing via email and not dumping into a meeting so the October 11th meeting. Oh, 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 oh! I understand. I understand. Yeah. I think I think a quick five-minute update. Would, would, yep, that's yep. fine. Yeah. I'm just saying, but like, let's try to be efficient mm -hmm. yes. and, and no, get stuff done asynchronously. Absolutely. Um, <coughs> yeah. Loudly heard. That's something we're sending on, as a whole committee. It has to be voted on, so that has to be done in open session. Yeah, yeah. I'm just saying, everybody do their reading beforehand. Write their comments on the letter beforehand. <laughs> like, yeah. don't do what we normally do. <laughs> okay. <laughs> noted noted <laughs> all right anything else on that okay perfect um so we'll move right along and this is going to take me about three seconds um to the <laughs> update on the norfolk county sheriff's office youth substance use and mental health task force um that is such a mouthful i really wish they'd come up with an acronym for that that's like really easy to say um short version is uh the speaker didn't show up so <laughs> Um, they did not come. Uh, we were we put out into breakout rooms and to speak with some members um, from other communities. I will say, um, the one thing I did learn in that breakout session is that we are not the only community dealing with any with with um, uh, social emotional issues, uh, especially amongst our younger, um, maybe middle of the group pack. Without calling out middle school kids, um, I just did. So <laughs> it was, it is, it is a definite, as we, we all know this, we really do all already know this, but it was just kind of validating to hear other communities um, discuss like the issues that they're having as well. Um, and then this is not an isolated thing to Norwood by any stretch of the imagination. Um, and it is, as you know, even Dr. Thompson has been like harping on, this is, this is nationwide, statewide, um, but you know, just people who are in the schools and in, um, school committees across uh, you know our local very Norfolk County area were also having the exact same issue so that was validating um, uh, and to have that support as well you know other people trying to give 
support and, and ideas. And um, But like I said, unfortunately, the um, speaker that we had scheduled for that night did not come. They had a family emergency. Um, so we do have another meeting upcoming on Monday, October 23rd, where that speaker will actually come, um, as well as, um, uh, and that speaker, let me just say, was uh, Colleen Pertoni. Um, uh, and I don't, she is from, I'm going to forget. Um, but who is regularly scheduled for that meeting is Rick Doan, the Executive Director of Interfaith Social Services. Um, it was scheduled to speak in the first place, and uh, Colleen is the, she doesn't have, oh, I'm gonna, just gonna shut up now because she's with the state, but I cannot find exactly what her position is. But she was gonna speak to us um, on the commission, on the, the commission of the status of grandparents raising grandchildren. So that will be on October 23rd. Okay, I, I'm gonna assume you guys do not have questions on that. Fabulous, so moving straight to the next agenda item is policy subcommittee update. Thank you, you alluded to it earlier, um, but we started digging into sort of some process and protocol questions about how we're gonna handle um, regular updates um, and both with the timing, which is not always consistent um, from a MASC, um, and then just with the volume. Um, we've spoken about this before, um, but there's a lot to maintain. Um, just again, a quick re recap for people who might be just be joining us. Um, <coughs> this body did a huge overhaul <coughs> of our policy manual in the last several years, and it was a big <coughs> load of work, and um, it was work that needed to be done that hadn't been done for a while. So. We kind of caught up, but we now need sort of a maintenance system that is sustainable. And um, we've been in discussion about what makes the most sense, um, how other places do it, this sort of thing. And so this new iteration of the policy committee is um, going to focus a little more on, uh, not that it hasn't been discussed, but how moving forward we want the process to look and what tools uh, we're going to use so that's a it's just a tedious work and so we got we really dug into that um, at our last meeting and we'll continue to do that with some um, I'm, I'm drafting sort of something to respond to in terms of those processes and that those steps um, specifically one of the things that we need to report back on is the PTO um, guidelines and donation form that we would be asking our PTOs to follow to comply with KCD. And um, just because of the nature of everything going on and the challenges of the district, that has been delayed, but I think we're, we're just about there. So um, you all should expect to, to be able to vote on something on the 11th. Um, we should have a final thing. So we're gonna talk about this, give it to PTOs to just submit any questions to turn around to us quick and then on the 11th we should be able to have that finalized um, I don't think there's anything else unless you guys have specific questions it's all just a, a lot of you know oh um, Jamie was updating the most recently approved uh, policies to be added to added with our approval and, and updated to the website as well as our hard copies. Um, again, just sort of a two yeah. step in the process. Yeah, we did say, um, and, and you know, the committee can feel free to, to um, disagree, but we did tell Jamie not to go ahead and reprint all the new hard copies just yet because we know we have to do quite a bit of work with the um, MASC policies uh, from um, March and then the one that just came out in September. Um, so I th think it was kind of not a good idea to print them out just for the few that we approved at the, at the um, and I think most the of August these meeting. are electronic ones. Yeah, I think most people will look at the electronic one because it's kind of labor intensive to look through the paper copies, but feel free to, you know, again, feel free to disagree, but the one electronically and on the website has been updated. Um, it has the, the, t the stamp on it, you know, approved by Norwood School Committee uh, 2023 on the bottom of that, um, or updated, I think it says updated by the, um, Yes, but that you know, at that moment, at that time, we we didn't think it because we know we're going to be doing several more upcoming. 
Right. Um, that it, we should not print all new manuals. <laughs> um, and then um, further, for our next meeting, we're meeting on the Tuesday the 3rd at 11, and we'll meet every other Tuesday. Um, to Anne Marie's earlier point, we'll uh, get into the long term, we can talk about long term um, agenda as well. That should become more clear through these, these, these yeah. steps. So. And we also have a, um, we also are, are looking through the minutes from the pr some previous meetings where um, it has been requested that the policy subcommittee look at certain um, policies. So that will also be talked about at our next meeting. So there's, to put those on we're, yeah, yeah, so we're, we're, we're definitely um, putting together a plan, a game plan for the rest of the year for where, how to get through all those new MASC updates as well as all the policies that, um, mm -hmm. that come up just during our regular meetings. Any questions? Right, just a question. Jamie's only printing the policies we're changing. She's not reprinting the entire manual. Again. I think that was the thing. She wasn't sure if she should print the entire manual or if no, it's. No, she wasn't going to. Was she? I thought it she was, was going to print the entire manual. And I think that's what she said. And I went, no, 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 no. <laughs> I don't think no, so. No, what we've in the past, and, I, and I, I recommend we just do, is just like as you change a policy, she prints off that policy. She comes in the room, she replaces that policy in, in the binder. Um, and then there is a policy binder in Dr. Thompson's office that yeah. moves with um, Priscilla, and that one we should make sure is always updated as soon as the one online is because okay. it's in our policies that people can come to the superintendent's office and look at that binder. And I think just making sure it's all aligned is really important. Yeah, yeah, I think that that makes sense. Um, and are they are the policy manuals also in? They're nowhere else, right? It's just in your office and our. No, they're in our, our office. Is it in the schools? We copies this summer to put in each school. In the schools, and too, the yeah. The idea with that is that we would bring a written, updated policy and then give it to the principal. And okay. Place it so we can have Jamie print off ones for or right. for uh, each of the schools. That, that makes sense. Mm -hmm. I think that was the concern, was, and of course, logistically, not even thinking that it's in a three ring binder that it can easily be pulled out and replaced. It's not a book. A bound book um, so yeah we can definitely do that um, any other questions concerns suggestions okay um, so <laughs> he pulls out the giant thing yep. <laughs> um, so the next item on the agenda um, is the uh, update for the superintendent search process so I have Ms. Stewart here to give us the update. Yeah, brief update tonight, just so the community is aware of you know, what the school committee has started to do and what will come next. Um, Kate and Joan and I attended a webinar with MASD on this topic on September 8th. So in your packet, you do have access to those slides from that webinar. Um, I've been in touch with MASC, who we are going to be bringing in as our consultant for this process, and we have a workshop set up with them uh, for next week, October 5th. Um, it's a workshop to make sure that all of us are on the same page as the school committee on what comes next, um, what decisions we will need to make. Um, there is some information coming from Glenn that I will get to Jamie tomorrow to put in the packet for October 5th, but please spend some time going through that so that we can use our time wisely with Claude Kucher and Jim Party on the 5th. Um, but then on the 11th, this will go back on the agenda at a school committee meeting, and that's where we'll take the information that we learned in the workshop, and then we will have to deliberate and make some decisions. Um, we will need to appoint one to two people from the school committee to lead the superintendent search. That will be one thing we'll do on the 11th. And then there's some decisions that need to be made around um, community engagement, forums and surveys, um, and how um, we are going to create a search committee. Um, so I know there's some people in the community who have been reaching out to some members of the school committee and saying, how would I be on a search committee? I want to be on a search committee. And we will have more information to share on that process on October 11th. Thank you. Any questions? Any other discussion? All right. I love how we are moving. Am I, am I jinxing it? Yep. Mm -hmm. We're really close to the end. Am I jinxing yeah, it? Yep, yep. <laughs> Keep going. Next item on the agenda is the SAC advisor job description. Dr. Thompson, would you like to walk us through this? Sure. Let me pull it up here. Got it. Uh, so in your packets is a job description for the student 
advisory council advisor um, looking for you to approve this um, job description so that we can get um, get the position posted and filled. Um, a little background obviously for the community. Um, the Student Advisory Council is a council made up of high school students um, that um, work with the school committee um, in accordance with state law um, to you know basically bring a student voice to the school committee um, and there was a need obviously um, to have an advisor uh, at the high school to be able to help them and to guide them through the process um, of working with the school committee uh, so any questions any concerns any comments about this job description I wrote here briefly um, in the DESE comprehensive review that I know Dr. Thompson, you're still, you know, reviewing and, and will present to the school committee at a future date. Um, one of the strengths of the district that indicated in that review was the fact that we do have a student advisory council. Um, so I just wanted to recognize that. Yes, and they are a wonderful group of students. Uh, last year they were fantastic. This year will be just as good and uh, if not better, and uh, looking forward to working with them. Do I have a motion to approve the job description? So moved. Moved by David, do I have a second? Second. Seconded by Kate, so I will poll individually. Teresa? Yes. Kate? Yes. Joan? Yes. David? Yes. And I'm a yes as well, so that passes five to zero. All right, that brings us to consent agenda. Yes, we have um, one donation tonight for a grand total of $774.30 from Bay State Tax Cuts. Okay. Do motion we have to approve. A motion moved by David. Or accept, excuse me, to accept the donation. Yes. Second. Seconded by Kate. Okay. Uh, Teresa? Yes. Kate? Yes. Joan? Yes. David? Yes. I am a yes as well, so that passes five to zero. And that brings us to school committee addenda. I will start with Teresa. Yeah, thank you. Um, literally quick meeting <laughs> uh, for us. Um, but I just wanna, I've been reflecting on some of the, the feedback and comments that we have received. Um, and again, thank you to the community. But in that process, there were some statements that were made that I've just really been reflecting on. And I've been saying for the six and a half years that I've been on school committee now that I don't think the public fully understands what a school committee does. And I feel that way. And I know we're very busy, but at some point I would love for us to have some type of education um, to share with the community, you know, what our responsibilities are and what it is that we do. And, and um, Kate spoke to this last night and again tonight, but that middle school naming process was under our scope of authority and it's one of many things that is under the scope of our authority and we are a very hard-working board and we are a very hard-working administrative team and we're a hard-working district um, if people follow our agendas and look at the broad range of things that do follow under us you know even though we got through a lot of things tonight that's because a lot of work happens in subcommittees and on task force and individually with budget and policy and outreach and legislative advocacy and many, many things. Um, so I, I just hope the community, instead of only paying attention on certain topics, can really fully engage with us and understand all the work that we do. And then the second thing I have just been reflecting on is the town's support of the schools and town meeting members' support of a budget for school and for school district and i would just hope that even if the school committee has to make some hard decisions that the community may not always understand or agree with that they still continue to support our students and our staff and the budget that is necessary to implement what our students great thank you Teresa. kate i don't have anything thanks go I feel like I've been sharing my agenda periodically throughout the last two days, <laughs> so I do not have anything. David. Okay, uh, it leaves me. Um, and I will just, um, again, I said this earlier, but I want to thank everybody who did come to the forum last night. Um, it, you know, uh, it is, 
it was great to see people civically engaged. Um, we do hope that that continues. I, I tongue in cheek say, be careful what you wish for, um, because uh, of course, you know, um, things are easier when people are not paying as much of attention. Let's be honest. Um, but it's it's it actually makes me happier um, when there is civil discourse because it means you're you're paying attention and you care. Um, so it, it really is something that I hope to see continue, um, and not just when there's a hot button topic. Um, but that is it, and I um, that brings us to the end of our Wednesday meeting. I think this might be a record. I don't know. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I feel like um, the micro machine man. I was talking very fast tonight. Um, so um, unf <laughs> unfortunately, we do need to go into executive session. Um, so we will only. Um, only reconvene for the purpose of adjournment. I do need a motion to go into executive session. So moved. Moved by David. Second. Seconded by Kate. I need to poll individually, I, hybrid or not. Um, so Teresa? Yes. Kate? Yes. Joan? Yes. David? Yes. I'm a yes as well. Um, our next meeting will be uh, Wednesday, October 11th. We will come to you again um, from this room. <laughs> um, and we hope to see you then. Thank you very much.